How's it going guys? Missy No here and welcome to the last video of the year. I wanted to end this year with a kind of Christmas themed video, but I'm too broke to be able to afford three copies of Old Man Winter or a third copy of Snowfort. So instead of something of an actual Christmas themed deck, we're going to do a Fire Nature Beastkin Dragon deck because what says Christmas more than fire breathing dragons with guns and crazed beast people? So, this deck is pretty fun. I feel it could probably be better. There's some choices that I'm already questioning right now that I've started recording this video. But I've already pressed start, so we're going to do it anyway. Uh, so anyway, this is what I've dubbed uh, Flame Spike EFT. And let's go ahead and hop into this deck profile. We're going to start things off with the three mandatory copies of Prickleback. This card is absolutely a necessary 3 of in anything B-Skin back in this format. Uh, 1 for 2,000, uh, B-Skin, like I said. And at the end of the turns, if this creature breaks a shield, it returns back to your hand. If they don't have any blockers to deal with it, this thing just starts breaking all of your opponent's shields. Um, since it doesn't stay on the field long enough for them to attack over, they have to deal with it with the shield blasts that you're going in and breaking. So they're going to need things like Bone Blades, Rock Bite, uh, return to soil to deal with it, stuff like that. Or else this card just starts going in super hard, starts dealing a bunch of damage. Uh, like I said, it's level one. This is fantastic evolution bait to go into things like Sabretooth in this format. Uh, we're not playing Sabretooth in this deck, but that's something to talk about later. But yeah, Prickleback, absolutely a three of in this format. This card is way too good to not play three of. We're also playing three copies of what I feel is mandatory three copies of Razorhide. Uh, three for 2,000 B skin. This is kind of like the Aqua Seneschal of the deck. Uh, you Every time it attacks, you get the top card of your deck put into your mana zone. So Seneschal lets you draw every time it attacks. This just lets you accelerate mana every time it attacks. Uh, level three, fantastic card for accelerating mana. Some good evolution bait. I probably should play a level two somewhere in between uh my friends both recommend playing some sprout but um this card d does quite a bit uh so three copy of razor hide also really fantastic card we also choose to play three copies of heat seekers uh this is a three cost spell that banishes a target enemy creature that has three thousand power or less this just starts picking off like really good cards uh deals with different seneschals they start getting too much advantage uh, razor hides if they start dealing, uh, they start getting pretty crazy with stuff. Uh, Scared Door with Plume Hollow, fantastic card to deal with. Uh, Heat Seekers just gets rid of a bunch of stuff. Uh, and I highly recommend this card as well. Some great removal. This is one of those questionable cards I was talking about, but I've been enjoying it. These are three copies of Breach the Veil. This is a three cost shield blast. It says, look at the top five cards of your deck, and you may take a creature from among them, reveal that creature, and put it into your hand, and then put the rest at the bottom of your deck. So, we don't have drawing in this deck. We have some form of searching, and this card just helps you dig super, super quick. Uh, we play quite a few evolutions. I believe we play seven in this deck. And Breach of helps you start digging to either get your bait or your big guys. Uh, this card actually comes in handy quite a bit, but I know that some people might not like it because it doesn't really accelerate board advantage, but I feel this card is super, super good to help me get the pieces that I'm looking for, and I might cut it for something, but right now Breach of Veil is doing absolutely fantastic. Next, we're playing three copies of Bronze Arm Tribe, or as me and my friends like to call it every time we play it, Range Arm Tarb. Uh, 4 for 1,000, Beast Ken. As soon as you play it, immediately put the top card of your deck into the mana zone. I evolve on top of this card a lot because 1,000 power really sucks. Um, and once it's gotten you your mana, it's basically a useless card. It's fantastic evolution bait to evolve into your Beast Kens that are better. Uh, maybe I would consider this 
a staple three of it's like part of the main beast can engine that you'd be playing during this format but like once you've gotten your mana like it, it's kind of useless but burn germ turd uh super good i'm playing three copies of reapin so i'm kind of questioning this because i do have a lot of digging and a lot of excel in this deck in the forms of like uh razor hide but um, I don't know, this is probably necessary. Uh, four cost, look type two cards to deck, put one to hand, put one to mana. Uh, mana Excel digs through your deck to help find better pieces that you need. Fantastic card. I don't really know why I'm questioning it. It's root, or not root trap, it's Reap and Sow. And uh, Reap and Sow is really good. Next, we move on to some of the Dragon package. We play three copies of Hyperspeed Dragon. Unfortunately, I only have play sets of the gold version. Uh, I would much rather play just the regular rares because they look better in my opinion. But my OCD won't allow me to mix rarities like that. So we're dealing with the gold ones. Uh, Hyperspeed Dragon, 5 for 5,000, Armor Dragon. Uh, while you have another Armor Dragon, all of your Armor Dragons have fast attack. So that's really good. Makes your deck even more aggressive. And most dragons you play that are armor dragon have double breaker. So having all of them be able to double break and then probably have some other additional effect to go with it makes this deck even more scary. Hyperspeed is absolutely needed. And also you need the armor dragon for evolution material as well. Next we play two copies of Twin Cannon Maelstrom. Five for 5,000. Gives all of your other creatures powerful attack plus 2,000. So... Unless you have two copies of it, it won't boost itself. But uh, having it in hyperspeed out, hyperspeed's hitting for 7,000. That's pretty good. Uh, just boosting everything to attack is just nice. So uh, can help we get over other things that are kind of annoying. And again, it's an armor dragon, which you need for evolution mate. This card I'm kind of questioning. Uh, two copies of Gigahorn Charger. It's a good card. Like, search your deck for anything that's 5,000 power or more as soon as you play it. It just helps you get into your finishers, which is really good. But with playing, like, three copies of Breach the Veil, we have three copies of Reap, and so... Um, we're just going through our deck a lot with mana. Um, I don't know how necessary this card absolutely is. There are times where it has come in handy, and I have one because of it. But, I don't know, it doesn't necessarily seem to be as needed as I'm making it seem. It's also a Tusker, so it can't evolve into your Beastkins or your Dragons. That's not necessarily an issue, because uh, it's just a body you can start punching with, and if it dies, oh well, it's already done its job for you. Uh, Gagorn Charger is a pretty good card. Again, don't know if it's necessarily needed. I might cut this in the future. Not sure for what yet. But uh, for the last level 5, we were playing 3 copies of Tornado Flame. It's a 5 cost shield blast that banishes target enemy creatures that have 5,000 power or less. This deals with so much of the format. It's just really good removal. It's not as good as Terror Pit, but depending on the state of the game, well, a lot of time it's just as effective as a Terror Pit. Um, but when you get over that 6,000 mark, things are more complicated to deal with. But not really once I show you one of our first evolutions of the deck. But Tornado Flame is a really good fire card for this format. Absolutely recommend it. And uh, yeah, three of because you have really no protection in this deck. Next we play two copies of Bullgash Dragon. This is a six for 6,000 armor dragon with double breaker. And whenever this creature attacks, you can banish an enemy creature that has blocker. So again, this gets fast attack if it's out with hyperspeed dragon. So, fast attacking double breaker that kills blockers is really, really good. Um, we don't really play much in terms of removal. We have, like, the Heat Seekers, and we have the Tornado Flames. So, this is another good way of dealing with our blockers, our opponent's blockers. Things like, you know, uh, Granger. Uh, getting rid of Granger is super good, because Granger has 9,000 power. So, be able to attack and then just kill it before it can block is super nice um highly recommend bullgash dragon also deals with uh scared of gloom hollow so 
So again, it's another big threat for the game. We are playing three copies of Flame Spike Tatsirion. This is like one of the main cards of the deck that I really wanted to focus on. This is a six for 8,000 uh, Beastkin Armor Dragon. So if you really need to, it can be bait for both. Um, Double Breaker. And whenever this card is battling, it gains 6,000 power. So the only way you're really getting rid of this card is with stuff like uh, Root Trap and Terrapid. Because when this thing is battling, either if I'm attacking you or you're attacking it, it's becoming 14,000 power. And nothing in the game at this point can hit for that hard. So this card is just kind of a menace. Um, but yeah, this card's super good. Like, I thought it was kind of neat, and I wanted to play a Beastkin that wasn't necessarily Bronze Arm Sabertooth, because I'll be showing that card off a lot during these videos, because Sabertooth is just absolutely amazing. My friends argue I should at least play, like, two copies of Sabertooth in deck, and maybe I will. Maybe I'll take out the, um, Gigahorn Chargers for it, but Flamespec Tatsirion is just really really funny i feel this is a card that it didn't see much play maybe there's a reason for that but i thought this card was just neat i really wanted to show it off so uh, yeah basically a six for fourteen thousand power dude is really good all right so next we're playing two copies of tetsirion the unchained this is done for six thousand beast can armor dragon uh it has double breaker when it enters the battle zone, you can banish the target enemy creature has 4,000 power or less. And then when this creature wins a battle for the first time, you can untap it. So if they go in and try and double break some shields, they put, uh, try and block with something small. Um, it'll win the battle with the blocker and just untap it and just go in again. So unless they have a blocker that can actually like kill Tetsirion... Uh, there's no point in them blocking it because you're just going to do damage and they're just down to an unnecessary body loss. Uh, like I said, it's an armor dragon, so it can evolve into your armor dragon evolution that's coming up. It's also a beast skin, so if you really wanted to, you could evolve flame spike on top of it. I don't really think of a scenario where that's necessary unless you absolutely have to hit over something really big. Because, you know, 14,000 power is really good. Um... Yeah, the Dynamic Change is just absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the best cards in this format by far. This next card, not so much. This is Evo Fury Tatsirion. This bad boy can fit so many fucking Tatsirion in it. As far as I know, this card saw very little play. Uh, you'd think it'd be really good, seeing as how it has the set name and its name, and it was a main character in the show. But, you know, uh, the show is bad, in my opinion, and uh, so is this card. But I had it, and I wanted to show it off. So, 7 for 12,000 power, has to evolve on top of an armored dragon. It has triple breaker, and this creature enters the battle zone, targeted an enemy creature, and it cannot attack or block until the start of your next turn. So, uh, right there, it's kind of like a Lyra. In which they can't attack. Um, I don't know. I guess Lyra is the wrong card choice. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, just locks your opponent down. They can't attack or block with a certain creature. If it was every time it attacks. That would be even better. But oh well. It's a one time effect you get for this card. Uh, but again triple breaker. So maybe you don't necessarily need it that much. Especially with how aggressive the, the front half of this deck is. With like prickleback and all that. If you drop this, you should be winning, honestly. But, I don't know, I feel this is kind of a bad card. But, I wanted to show it off. So that's Eve of Yuri Tetsirion. And last, we play three copies of Root Trap. Uh, we can't play Terra Pit, so we play Nature Terra Pit instead. And Root Trap is just always a really good card. So yeah, that's the deck. I want to end on something that's kind of fun. Not necessarily like amazing, like we are playing Evo Fury Tatsirion. No one played Evo Fury Tatsirion. Um, but the deck is competent enough that it can just be a really fun deck to play. 
Flame Strike absolutely gets in there. Like I said, 14,000 power is nothing to scoff at. Like those, That was the hardest hitting thing in this format, technically. But no one really played Flame Spike. I do have more decks coming up uh, in mind that play Flame Spike because I feel this card is like very underutilized. But also maybe it was just the scene that I played in. No one really played Flame Spike in my area. So maybe it actually saw a lot more play and I just never saw anybody play it. Um, yeah, like I said, like deck isn't great, but it's not bad. It's definitely a really fun, different deck to play. It wasn't like one of the big meta threats like Blurple or Sabretooth or Cobalt Control, but it can hold its own against a good chunk of those. I haven't really tested against Blurple, so maybe not so much Blurple, but that's something I can test in the future. There's definitely some card choices that I am overlooking. That I probably should be playing. Uh, for level 2s I could definitely be playing Sprout. Or Comet Missiles. Those both seem like really good staples I should be playing. Uh, like I mentioned I'm not playing Barnes Arm Sabretooth. And I absolutely should be. Uh, maybe I'll cut the Gigahorn Charges for it. Who knows. But Barnes Arm Sabretooth is an absolutely necessary. Like Beast Can Evolution. It does so much for the deck. It makes it hyper aggressive. And it makes it your opponent has to deal with it. But if they deal with it and it gets banished, it just goes to mana. You get plus two mana. So how they go about doing it, it's either going to be really beneficial for you or they just have to keep taking shields. So um, what's another good card? You could consider Return to Soil. That's uh, a four cost shield blast that just puts a level four lower creature in the mana zone. So... There's that, but I don't really give my opponent mana. Root Trap is a different story because it can put anything in the mana. So if like a really big threat like Tetsir and the Unchained or something, just remove that entirely from the game. is That's absolutely necessary. But I want to thank everyone for joining me this year. I had, I guess, quite a bit of growth. Granted, most of that growth probably came from the Pokemon Crystal Clear video. Is that video is it like... 31,000 as of recording and most videos get like maybe 100 to 150 views so uh but if you're here for like Ijudo stuff thanks because that's mainly what I want to focus on um I know this game has been dead for quite a long time but it still brings me a lot of joy and I'm happy I could get to share Kaijudo stuff with anyone who's still willing to watch it uh game is great I'm so upset that it's gone but Anyway, this is the video. Uh, thanks for a really fun year. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to doing even more Kaijudo stuff in the future. And I hope you guys will continue to join me in this adventure. Because, yo, this game is really fun. <laughs>